it was like an ocean of love. Everything was love. It was like, I wasn't in my bed anymore. I was surround, like completely surrounded in this very tangible ocean of love. Well, thank you all for joining us. I am Daniel Lovitz, and on the line I have Melissa. Denise. Melissa Denise. And uh, yeah, I found uh, your channel on YouTube as I was searching for Christian mystic stuff and was yes. just so blessed. But as I was listening to her, I'm like, wait a minute, she's sounding a lot like me. Wait a minute, what's <laughs> going on here? <laughs> she's saying a lot of the same stuff, and she loves Jesus too. What? What's going on here? I'm going to start by just talking about that amazing out-of-body, expanded consciousness experience you had. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that. absolutely. So so I usually refer to it as my near-death-like experience. Yeah. The background on that is that I was very miserable and depressed for my entire life. I was suicidal leading up until that point, and I had been begging God for years to give me some type of experience and let me feel him in a real way because I knew there was something that I was missing that I was remembering that wasn't clicking here in this life. And so years went by and nothing happened until I can't explain why it happened when it did, but one night it just happened. So I was laying in my bed. It was dark. My eyes were closed because I was getting ready to go to sleep. And all of a sudden I was in another dimension. I, so it was like an ocean of love. Everything was love. It was like, I wasn't in my bed anymore. I was surround, like completely surrounded in this very tangible ocean of love. And it was around me and it was inside me. And as the experience was happening, I'm sure you know, when these things are happening, it, you're not questioning it, questioning it. It's just, it's your entire reality. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I recognized it because I remembered it from before. And I was, it was just happening to me. And it's all I knew in the moment. And I knew that it was God and I recognized him and remembered him from before. And actually I was thinking like, what took you so long to show up? Cause I, I knew this was real. And where, where has it been my whole life? <laughs> and it was like, um, just being back with your eternal father and mother, the most safe and comforting place and words really fail me. I don't know how to convey what that was like, but, um, so that went on, I don't know how long. And then a phase, a new phase started where it was like my consciousness expanded out of my head. And at that point, I was not in my room anymore. I was up, up somewhere in the universe. And I had an experience that many near-death experiencers call ultimate knowledge, where I would ask a question and then I would be given, this sounds so crazy, but I'd be given not only the answer to the question, but how that answer connected to everything else in the universe. And so those answers would bring up more questions. And then the cycle kept repeating until my consciousness encompassed everything that is. And I just knew everything that there is to know, or at least everything I could know at that level of consciousness. And um, most of what I was shown, I, I can't remember because I, it fell away from me when I came back. But there are a couple things that I do remember as I looked down at the earth and I saw that it was brilliant light. So it's like going, if you've ever flown in an airplane on a stormy day and then you go up above the clouds and all of a sudden it's so bright and you look down and you can see the storm clouds. So it was like coming up above the storm clouds of my depression and all my mental issues I had going on into the bright sunlight and then looking down and seeing the storm clouds weren't even there. You can only experience them from underneath because they're not real. They're an illusion that's created for a certain purpose. Hmm. 
And um, really, in reality, all that exists is God. And God is manifested as light. And so it's like light everywhere, just waves of light everywhere is what I saw. And the, the waves of light are God's arms. And he's holding us. And we're like toddlers. And we're all light. And he, we can't get away from him even when we think we're running away from God. We're, we are light and he is light and we are the same thing and we can't get away from that. Yeah. We're in an ocean then, of love, right? Yes. So you yes. can't escape. This is, a, this, this is what has set me free and it's formed a paradigm shift. You know, this is my new reality. God is love in whom we live and move and have our being as the scripture. Yes. Says. Yes. It's in the Bible, multiple oh. places. Yes. So then the other thing that I saw is I looked down and I saw God's, this is, sounds so cheesy, but the word I was given is God's master plan. Mm -hmm. And it looked like this beautiful, colorful um, Mandela pattern that was very intricate. I can't really describe it, but it was like swirling and moving and changing and there was this current around the edges like this that nobody could get out of um, in reality because God is all that exists, but we all exist within this plan and the current is continually pulling us back in towards the center. And wow. um, within the plan, we, we have all kinds of experiences, good and bad and, and the joy and the heartache and all of that. Um, for various reasons, and we have what we call free will, but really, even when we choose the opposite of God, we're still choosing God because God is all that exists, but we have free will for that experience of having the choice, but in reality, God, God's love is holding all of us and pulling us all back towards himself, so I saw that, and most of what else I saw, I, I don't remember. Um, eventually the experience came to an end and then I sort of contracted back into my head and I felt like um, all the knowledge I had gained, like all the consciousness I had gained was leaving my head like air leaving a balloon and I contracted like back into my body and like clicked back into place and then it was over. But I felt this glow around me for the next couple of days and so I knew that it was real, that it had actually happened. Wonderful. And you had a lot of takeaways too, right? Like some of the mm -hmm. lessons that you came back with. Mm -hmm. And I was actually, when I, when I heard you in your, in your video that was sharing that about that, I had a moment with God. Like, I was just like, whew, I just felt like blessed, you know, Holy Spirit was just, whew, you know, it was amazing. Um, very comforted by just some of the stuff you, you shared about your takeaways from that experience. Yeah. Good. Thank you. <laughs> I I'm even wrote really it down. I'm really glad that it can be helpful. I, even wrote it, I wrote it down. You want to know what you said? Here, I'll quote you back to yourself. <laughs> that okay. Everything is okay. Everything's okay. Your life was proceeding. Okay, I'll just put it in first person. My life was proceeding just as it is supposed to, that I'm securely and eternally loved, yeah. that God is right now holding me in his arms. There is nothing I can do to get away from him. There's nothing I can do to make him mad or to surprise him or disappoint him. There's no punishment awaiting me. There's only an awakening into brilliant light and bliss that I am being watched over, guided and loved. That my mistakes are like the stumbles of a toddler learning to walk to God. There's nothing to feel guilty about. There's nothing to feel afraid of. There's only lessons to learn and experiences to be had. Brilliant and wonderful. And you know, I just want to just emphasize too that Jesus told us that we're the light of the world. He informed mm -hmm. us of this, you know, and God is light and yeah. there's no darkness at all. And, and he's everywhere. He fills and floods the whole universe. I had this experience with my cat, all, all light and all love. I woke up from a nap and there he was on my chest, you know, and he was all light and all love. It was just this brilliant moment. Um, just realizing that the whole earth it really is filled with the glory of God. And one day the knowledge, mm -hmm. the knowing of that fact will fill the earth. You know, that's what the scripture says. Yeah, the knowledge of God will fill the earth as the waters cover the sea, it says. Yes. I actually too had an experience with seeing the earth from a distance. 
did yeah. you? Yeah. And, and um, what I saw was um, like it, it shattered into like these crystalline geometric shapes and then mm -hmm. went off to one side and was sucked through the middle and then reformed whole again. Oh. Yeah, so when you, when you said that about the mandala and, and about being pulled through the center and things like this, I was like, huh, mm -hmm. that's very interesting. And I do know that the Lord uh, God is healing the earth from the inside out. And it's just like, this is why a lot of stuff is manifesting on the surface now. You know, it's just coming to light to be healed. That's, yes, that's I agree. Coming to light to be healed. A lot of the things that are happening in the world are uh, necessary. Mm -hmm. We have to work out our issues in order to be healed and grow through them. Yes, to process all our trauma yeah. as a collective. Yeah. It's very true. And part of that trauma has been based around and brought on by fear, right? And, and, and the, oh, yeah. the enemy would uh, continue continue this monsters inc plan of just continuing this fear because that's what they're used to just being fueled by but like to release that fear and release that trauma to god and just to receive that love instead mm -hmm. and the healing so yeah i wanted to talk about that in particular about um about fear and fear mongering and even in the church and what we've experienced oh, in religious mm -hmm. circles What's that been like for you over your years? Um, I was raised in a pretty strict branch of Christianity, um, Reformed Baptist, which is Calvinistic um, in theology. So it teaches that God created most of the world's population for the purpose of suffering eternal torment in hell, and that Jesus died only for the elect. And so that... The way that affected me, it, it made me very depressed. It made me very have a very dark outlook. Like, why, why bother? Everything's already predestined, and we're basically living in a tragedy. Um, yeah. And then after that, I moved to, well, when I was 19, I left that church, and I went to a charismatic Armenian church, which at the time, it was like water to a thirsty person dying of thirst because they taught um no god actually loves the whole world and jesus came to die for everybody and jesus wants to save and heal and deliver everybody which i believe is absolutely true but there's a limit on how much jesus could do and um i don't know what your thoughts are on that but at the time that was um, such a relief to me that, that God wanted to save us and God wanted to heal us, but it, it's still a very tribal mentality looking back on it now, because it's still, it's very much, there's the in-group and there's the people that um, believe the right thing, accept the right doctrine. And then everybody else is still going to hell. And it's, it's just very sad and it's very tragic. And, yeah. um, Go ahead. Well, I'll share some good news with you. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, and I, I too had had grown up in those kind of environments with that kind of theology, um, and I was it never sat well with me. And the Lord has has led me to the certain conclusion of ultimate reconciliation. Yeah. That, that is the joyful end. That you know, the last enemy to, to be defeated is death, which is our illusion of separation. Uh -huh. That's going bye bye. You know, that yes. death will be swallowed up by life and love will triumph over judgment. You know, mercy triumphs over judgment. And um, it's wonderful that no one is abandoned by the Lord forever. That's from Lamentations 3, you know, and that he devises ways to bring us back to himself. What does that include? I, you know, I, I talk with my wife uh, about reincarnation sometimes, like that could be part of the process of redemption, of drawing all mm -hmm. men back to himself, like these these scenarios that Mac went through in, in the, the movie, The Shack, you know, oh, like yeah. some sort of scenario mm -hmm. like that being, being presented to a soul that's lost and confused. And I'm, I even look at evil spirits and demons like they're just lost and confused grandma and Uncle Joe, right. you know, and, yeah. and their family, honestly, and they're just lost and confused and they're doing things that they do out of fear a lot of times. And, mm -hmm. you know, 
uh, there's a lot of demands that are placed upon them in the, in the realm of darkness, mm -hmm. um, these sorts of things. You know, I've, I've researched near-death experiences a lot as well, mm -hmm. um, interviewing Howard Storm, such, you know, and you did as well. Yeah, I saw that on your channel the other day. Yeah. So, yeah, um, one, one afternoon, the Lord woke me up and he said, Daniel, have you considered the curative and restorative qualities of hell? Mm. yeah and the hell being suffering the hell was kind of in quotes the hell is like yeah. our self-inflicted suffering of duality the fact that we live in this 3d reality and we have to deal with all these other people who are just plugged into this 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 paradigm of the knowledge of tree and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that's what we've bought into this duality and, and all these judgments you know and things mm. like that so there is a there's a curative and restorative quality about that and it's it's not really bad at the end of the day because it's pr providing a service for our souls, for our learning, for our growth. Right, right. Yeah, and it's providing a service for us. And in a way, I think as long as we're experiencing it, we're choosing it. Yeah. And even speaking out of my own personal experience with my growth as I've been... Um, working towards enlightenment and like transcending my ego or whatever language you want to use, crucifying the flesh. What I found find is that a lot of times I know I don't have to keep getting sucked into this cycle of suffering or hell, but sometimes when I'm in that moment, it's almost like, yeah, but I, I want the drama. There's, there's a part mm -hmm. of me that, I want to see this drama play out. And that's where I have to make the hard choice and realize, no, that's, that's the flesh nature. That's the ego. That's, that's why it says crucify it <laughs> because you keep going down this cycle of creating more and more suffering for yourself. And the more you feed into it, the more it's going to come back on you. So that's what hell is to me. Um, and hell could be experienced on many different levels. Oh yeah. True that. I mean, there's lots of, lots of um, realms and planes of existence. You know, people use the word astral plane. I see mm -hmm. no problem with that. Um, of, of <laughs> where, where a soul resonates, what's their frequency? What are they drawing to themselves yeah. with that frequency? What kind of community gathers around them in that frequency? what kind of suffering that ensues because that's that's the case you know these sorts of things but of course we can uh, ascend you know into a greater reality and ultimately the, the gospel provides for everyone the fact that jesus has brought the entire cosmos wrapped up the entire cosmos in himself and has ascended and could not get any higher or closer to the, the, the very pure center of the source of eternal love and we're there we're mm -hmm. there. Our higher selves are there already. And so we get to walk out this journey of like exploration because we that's where ultimately we all will end up. We're going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're all coming home. You know? Yeah. And and again, yeah, God basically just says, okay, if you want the experience, go have it. But eventually you're coming home. So yes. And, and what, what an increased capacity for joy we have because of the suffering. That's the service it provides. Oh, yeah. Like oh, even, yeah. even if you look at the, the life of Job, what a gift it was to him, you know, at the end of the day, that it increased his capacity through all the suffering for the increase of joy. And there's no greater or jo more joyful being than Jesus because he experienced it all. He experienced all of Job's suffering. He experienced all of everyone's suffering. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, by becoming one with us. So, you know, that we can, we're all the son now, you know, and coming home to the father. So, yes, absolutely. Yes. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And that's where I want to focus. I mean, I was just hanging out with some guys this morning of having coffee and it kind of took a dark turn at the end with like, oh, I, no. had, I had a dream last night and, uh, and you know, uh, I, I even hesitate to say what it was because it was like he felt it was very prophetic. And I'm like, I've had these dreams too. And 
you know, uh, about actually the same thing. This could be a potential reality. Maybe it's meant to be prayed about and mm -hmm. to like thwart that, or like maybe God has a purpose and plan in that. I don't know, but it was about Yellowstone exploding, the super volcano and mm -hmm. the gases, you know, uh, knocking birds out of the air. And, you know, I've had a dream about ash uh, on the ground and cities gone dark, you know, and things like this. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's a grim future. <laughs> There's something beyond that, though, that Howard Storm has seen, you know, that yeah. 200, 200 years into the future of uh, the future of the world. Pretty brilliant. Well, that that particular thing with the volcano comes up in near-death experience prophecy. I've seen it multiple times. That's one of the things that's listed um, along with other natural disasters and government collapse and stuff like that. But it's, um, it's always qualified that this is the direction that we are heading if we don't learn to love each other. And yeah. um, if we can learn to love each other, if we can make progress in the right direction here, then these disasters can be avoided. Yeah. Yeah. And how, how is it avoided uh, not giving into fear? Because this whole thing, this whole track of disaster ensuing and you know what people call apocalypse but really it's not it's not the true definition of apocalypse uh, apocalypse means the unveiling and the revealing and it's really the revealing of jesus it's actually a good and glorious thing does it accompany yeah. some birth pangs of like i'll put it this way the all-consuming fire of god's love mm -hmm. <laughs> burning up all that is not of love's kind yeah. you know and with all of us how stubborn are we really at the end of the day that's yes. the big question that is the question <laughs> will we humble ourselves to receive papa's love which displaces fear cuz perfect love yes. drives out all fear so yeah and that, that's what when i get into conversations with people about the end times it's like i think so many people are stuck in a mindset where they think it's going to be tragedy and disaster and we can't avoid it. And so we, we get stuck in this mindset of fear that's actually going to create these things because then it's crippling us from actually doing what we need to do to avoid that. So we have to focus on what is possible. If that makes sense, like believe that, that we can go a different direction and, and see and believe the best in humanity. Like obviously like Jesus does because he um, gave everything for us and he believes in us. This comes out a lot. And of course in miracles too, that Jesus sees the best in us. And he, he already sees the end from the beginning. Like the atonement is complete and he sees us through the eyes of perfection so if we can see that in each other and see that in the world, then we can begin to create that path. Yes, yes, amen to that. Recognizing the love that truly indwells each heart, you mm -hmm. know, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And uh, it's just a matter of, uh, okay, yielding our, what, stubbornness, our selfishness, our whatever that isn't love, surrender. Surrender mm -hmm. is the path forward. Humility is the way forward. Yes. Love, of course, <laughs> ultimately. Hope, too, having hope. I mean, I want to mm -hmm. have a hope for my kids. You've got kids, too. We want to have a bright, yeah. glorious future for them. Will it, yes. will it, you know, and it, it'll be great maybe not to have, you know, a huge disaster like that or nuclear war or whatever else that could happen because of a bunch of knuckleheads that populate the planet who <laughs> lead us to that end. But we, you know, as a, it, it doesn't take much, a small percentage really of Earth's population to raise your frequency into love. Yeah. And that's the whole message to me of like 444. That's raise your frequency mm -hmm. into love and into the awakening to who Jesus really is. Come on, people. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, he is the desire of all the nations. He's, he's what everybody wants. You know, we just have to come to see that. And that, and it's sad that he's been so misportrayed. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you got to recognize that Jesus' name is love. So God yeah. is love. Those who live in love live in God and God in them. So yes. it's wonderfully inclusive in that way. You can be yes. a Hindu and be a follower of Jesus without even knowing it if you love well. <laughs> yes, exactly. I would love to ask you about... Um, 
Christian mysticism in the Bible, um, the idea that God is within us. And I've heard you talking in some other interviews about the I am, which Aaron mm. Apke talks about a lot as well. And and I heard you mention that it's all throughout the Bible. And I'm, I'm just curious because I know some passages, but I'd love to know more. That is in my book as well. Yes, is it? It, it is. Oh, good. And um, it's John 14, 20 in particular is, is mm -hmm. kind of where I think my journey started with that. It's like, in that day, you will know, Jesus says, that I am in the Father and the Father is in me and I am in you. Oh my gosh. Talk about ultimate reconciliation right there. The yeah. reconciled. It's, it's all brought back into oneness, uh, divine union. And then, of course, what did Jesus pray for in John 17? Do you think he got what he prayed for? Of course he did. That prayer is recorded for a reason, for us, uh -huh. to know that Jesus got what he prayed for. You know, when he says, Father, may they be one in us. Uh -huh. you know? And then Psalm 82, 6 has always been one for me. I mean, I, I read this 20 years ago in Bible college, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it just leaped off the page. Psalm 82, 6 is, says, uh, the, I say, you are Elohim. That's the word they use. It's the plurality. Oh, yeah. The plurality uh -huh. of God, all of you are sons of the most high God, you know, and uh, Jesus quotes that, you know, New Testament he does. real estate is taken up with, with Jesus saying this, mm -hmm. you No, know, he didn't have to draw attention to it, but he chose to, you know, and he moved upon the apostles to highlight that as well. So it's there, Peter writes about being partakers of the divine nature, you know, and, and really what it came down to for me is like, okay, where did we come from? We came out of God, right? Mm -hmm. And just as a woman came out of man, are we going to argue that women are not equal to men? I, I'm not going to argue that. Of course, they're equal to men. Mm -hmm. So in the same way, we are equals to God. God doesn't create anything less than an equal, <laughs> you know, because it's all light at the end of the day. It's not a hierarchy. Yeah. It's all union. Uh -huh. It's all oneness. And uh, how it came together for me was just even through personal revelation too. I mean, like I'm just seeking the Lord in my living room, which the Lord rewards those who diligently seek him. You want to have an experience, just go seek him. <laughs> Spend an hour in, in prayer and just see what happens, you know, and put on some music and uh, whatever. And Jesus showed up in my living room and he says, Daniel, I am in you and you are in me and we are one. Remember wow. that. This is important. And he showed me that everyone is going to get this. I didn't even need to convince anyone. This wow. isn't a message we need to like preach or whatever. It's just like we get to joyfully share it. And then like within a couple of weeks, I'm driving and it, and it hits me like a ton of bricks. I was like, the I am is having a Daniel experience right now. Yes. <laughs> the I am is having a Melissa experience right now. Yes. You know, even last night I was in my kitchen and, uh, you know, it was after I, I was up till three 30 in the morning working on my book and, and I just, the father almost like is inhabiting my being, you know, and he's saying, I accept you. I accept you. You are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And he was saying this to me, you know, I'm like, I receive that and I rejoice in that, you know, and I'm, I'm at peace in that. That's wonderful. If you think about it, logically, um, one of the core tenets of the Christian faith is that God is everywhere, right? God is infinite. I was taught as a child, God is unending. He's never ending. Mm. But then we turn around and say that his entire creation is separate from him. So... Mm. God ends where his creation begins, then he's no longer infinite. It doesn't make yeah. sense logically. And this, yeah. And the scripture talks about doctrine of demons too, and they've infiltrated the church. I mean, if you were the enemy, right, up to no good, where would you seek to infiltrate but the church itself? You know, there's always been the mystics that, that mm -hmm. God's personally revealed himself to. And on, on a, a, any kind of basis, I think, like to one degree or another, I think that every true believer is a mystic you know oh because yeah we've all he says my sheep hear my voice you know they listen to me and they follow me you know and and we we know not to listen to that eventually eventually it comes around like no i'm sorry it was you had me for a while but no 
I'm sorry. And you, and you, and you walk toward the light. We're turning, well, I was turning to the light eventually, you know, and it might, suffering might be your greatest teacher in that, you know? Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Because the, the light shines the brightest where it's darkest. Yeah. And the darkness can never do anything about it. Yep. <laughs> the, if, the way I look at it, even, you know, with spiritual warfare, it's like, here's like, I think I learned this from Aaron Obke, you know, and maybe it was in the law of one or something, how the angels um, do spiritual warfare is just sending love and light, you know, even to rescue a soul, we're sending love and light and all the, the, the demonic or whatever. They're like, well, either we accept this love and light and are redeemed which is entirely a possibility mm -hmm. or if we want to retain this power that we think we have this of, of this illusion of darkness and whatever we have to flee you know and so it's creating space for that for the the kingdom of heaven to advance right oh that's so good i never yeah. thought of it like that yeah so it won't take many of us at all to have the kingdom advance here on this planet and to go in a very joyful direction, the choice is up to us. Yeah. So I intend to be one who's raising the frequency of the planet. And what, what happens to one happens to all. We're, we're mm -hmm. of the earth. So we affect the earth through this, you know, through just- Yeah, the... because we are all one. Yeah. And the, yeah, of course the miracles talks about that too. The salvation of one person is the salvation of the whole. There you so go. if one person is saved, then the rest are guaranteed to be. Yeah. We just have we just get to watch it work itself out. Yes. Yes. I still have yet to go through the bulk of the eight hours of you know audio on the Course in Miracles. I'm very curious to. I was actually recommending it to a friend of mine just that we could check it out together and discuss, you know, have a little book club. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, it's like it's interesting how it says in the beginning. This, this is the Course in Miracles. It is a required course. <laughs> you know, and that, that to me, uh, that's like angels told, told me something very similar about the book of Proverbs. They said, mm. Daniel, we want you to read the book of Proverbs. This is a class you must pass. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that's so interesting. I guess I better do it then. <laughs> but I yeah. think maybe with a Course in Miracles, it's it's a required course, but it's like the material in it is what's required. Maybe not the actual book yeah. itself, but yes. different people will learn it in different ways. That is a very, very good point. Because if you're connected to the host of heaven, you're going to get one-on-one -on -one training from, from the host of heaven. And that's actually what I'd recommend to people. Mm -hmm. Because because honestly, you need people need to have a foundation for for just to feel safe and even exploring spirituality. Like what's your foundation? You know, I'll, I'll tell you mine really quick. And then you, if you want to share uh, your thoughts on the subject, okay. my, found, my foundation is Jesus Christ. You know, mm -hmm. he's the good shepherd who laid down his life for a sheep. Who, what, why are we having a problem trusting him at this point? He's proven mm -hmm. himself completely. And he's the overseer of our souls. And so to, to give ourselves over into his care makes absolute sense. He's my good shepherd. He's going to lead me into green pastures. Psalm 23, right? Good pastures beside still waters, you know, preparing a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Mm -hmm. My cup runneth over more than blessed upon blessed. One blessing after another, the scripture says, grace mm -hmm. upon grace, favor and favor and favor, lavishing him with favor. Okay, I'll take that. Let yourself be loved, people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and and then that forms a foundation like i'm in his care he's got a rod and a staff for a reason it's to keep the, the wolves away mm. he defends me i can i can go forth boldly knowing that he's given me his spirit of truth who leads me into all truth i have an anointing the scripture says that teaches me i have no need that any man should teach me and so yeah i'd recommend people getting the plugged into jesus christ the, and the host of heaven you got spirit guides to guide you along your journey when they're in submission to the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, in, mm. in the ether, there's the Jedi and there's the Sith. And this is a perfect mm. illustration. Uh huh. I'm like, who do you want to be connected with? The Jedi or the Sith? Well, the Jedi are on Jesus side. The Sith are working for the enemy, you know, and deception <laughs> too. They're going to look the part. They're going to appear as an mm -hmm. angel of light 
and uh, and might be very attractive, and it might appeal to all your ego stuff that you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, look yeah, I, your thoughts. no, no, I agree. I agree with that. It 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 always seems to come back to Jesus, whether you're reading the Bible, near death experiences, of course, in miracles, all of these, and that's one of the the standards that I'll use to judge is this a reliable source of information because it, it always comes back to Jesus and all of these various sources saying the same thing that Jesus is the protector and the overseer of, of earth's spiritual evolution. He's here to help us. Um, and, and he's already accomplished it. And so, yeah, I agree with that. Um, there's no one better suited to help us than Jesus. And I, another Amen. thing I think that it always goes back to me is, is love. It's all about love. It's, it is so simple. God is love. Everything is love. And all that matters is love. And if you, if, if you don't know Jesus, if you're in a religion where you've never heard of him or say you were raised in an abusive church where you were abused by it, a, a church leader behind closed doors and so you're turned off to religion then you can know jesus through knowing love and i think many people probably do yes yes absolutely <laughs> i i i'd say yes 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 to that um and that to me is tremendously encouraging it's really all about love and they're and Jesus followers are everywhere, even though they don't know his name. Like mm -hmm. Billy Graham met a, a Buddhist, told a story of Jesus to, and and the, and the, and he said, Billy Graham finally said, "Well, would you like to receive Jesus?" And he says, um, "Sir, I've I've all, I've known Jesus all my life. I just didn't know his name. I've been that's so awesome. All my life. <laughs> well, and it's just like in the in the Gospels, Jesus says it. Like he never." Not that you shouldn't do this, but he never asked anybody to confess him as Lord. He asked you, he asked us to take care of the least of these yeah. because I am in the least of these. So, yes. Um, and I remember Aaron Epp, he did a, a vlog on this. It was probably a couple of years ago where he talked about this. And then he said, all right, I'm, I'm going to go talk to God today. And then he just went and walked around the streets of wherever he was at and talk to various people just to make the point that this is how you know Jesus when you love those even that society considers to be outcasts so it's all about love wonderful and that it, that is prominently highlighted in my book as well you know it, it's a book all about really encountering Jesus and I stress right from the start hey guys don't get the wrong idea Jesus is in everyone you meet you're meeting jesus everywhere all you know in your family every day you know mm -hmm. and and everyone you meet um you made an interesting comment about um david bentley hart in his translation of the bible how he translates logos mm -hmm. yes i love that and he said he as he was re researching that that the closest thing he could find on on planet earth to describe what logos really is is Tao, the chinese mm -hmm. idea of Tao, and it just floored me because i was i was i was familiar enough with Tao and the idea of where that was heading the mystery involved and in all of what that entails and and people would have to do their own research maybe read the Tao Te Ching or listen to it on audio it's uh, on youtube um but uh, but yeah, to get a better sense of the fact that the Tao has incarnated uh, in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. you know, wow. <laughs> I mean, share that with with uh, with China, you know. Like I was actually uh -huh. praying for China last night. I'm like, Lord, I just give you China. That's it's a small thing. Here's China. <laughs> Do yeah. your world. will work your magic. <laughs> No, I was just going to say, I wondered about that because reading it and reading the book of John, if you really read it, try to read it with an objective mind, it's, it's very mystical. Mm -hmm. And it, I wonder if it was written by a Gnostic or a mystic of some kind back then. And the Logos, it, I always just thought it can't just be, it can't just mean the word or whatever we've been told it means it, it seems to have a much deeper meaning because then it goes and says that the word dwelt within us or among us but that word i've heard and i'm not a scholar but that word that's usually translated within 
or among, excuse me, I've heard that it's translated within every other place in the New Testament. So it's saying wow. the Logos dwells within us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is beautiful. And I'll tell you what that means to me, that he's, he's validated all our stories. Mm -hmm. and, and that to me, uh, you know, Jesus isn't interested in invalidating anyone's stories. He came to validate all our stories and 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 infuse everything with meaning in fact the word logos can be translated as meaning itself mm. you know so he infuses everything with meaning you know and where solomon was was saying meaningless meaningless you know all everything's meaningless oh. no not so anymore jesus came and he infused everything and everyone with meaning and has validated all our stories you know we who who cried out like as as these sons of God, Father, I want you to know me. I want you to know this suffering and, and everything I've experienced. I want you to understand me. I want you to get me. You know, we're, we're crying it out to Father. And Jesus says, Jesus was Father's yes, yes, yes. You know, what stood out to me recently also is that the Father judges no one. Jesus mm -hmm. told us that the Father judges no one. And that's what I've experienced with, with God. So any picture that anybody has of God, it's, it, that it's, a, it's of a judge or whatever, that's a distortion. And that's where Calvin went wrong. He was a lawyer. Yeah. He defined everything in terms of judge and courtroom, you know, and, and, you know, and even understanding the atonement. Are you flipping kidding me? <laughs> no, J Jesus coming, the whole atonement is, I will absorb all your blows, all your anger, all your wrath, and say, I forgive you. I forgive mm -hmm. you. I love you. It was, it mm -hmm. was Father, I like to say, Jesus was the incarnation of the Father's heart. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> the incarnation of perfect love. Uh -huh. and come here to show us what the Father's like, what, what, your, what your daddy's like, what papa's like, and we get to run into his arms. And he judges no one. He's just like, and I like what you said in one of your videos, like um, reminding us that Jesus sees sin as, as a disease to be cured, not as an infraction to be punished. Mm -hmm. so, so true. And we're like in heaven's hospital right now, honestly. There's, he there's heavenly host about us right now. Like you said, the whole place is lit up with light. We just uh -huh. have the eyes to see it. You yeah. Know, we're in a heavenly hospital. <laughs> That's such a good way of looking at it. I've heard so many people say like, well, this is hell if here <laughs> on earth, but no, it's heaven's hospital. We're here to be healed and grow and learn. Yes. It's heaven's school. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And a wonderful school it is. We're going to be so eternally thankful for this experience, you know, and our whole tribe is going to be there to meet us and greet us. And hey, they want to meet and greet you now. You can have an experience. Go after God. You know, meet with the host of heaven. Channel your spirit guides. Did I just say that? <laughs> <laughs> Out loud as a Christian, <laughs> as a Jesus follower. <laughs> yes, I did. When they're in, when they're in, when they're in submission to and surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ, it's it's Jesus. It's another aspect of Jesus. Christ mm -hmm. fills them and animates them. You know, I was floored in, uh, when I was reading Galatians that Paul says it's a doctrine of demons to blend law with this message of grace so like oh interesting so it's just it's just grace it's just hyper grace grace mm -hmm. upon grace just love lavished he's got you covered he's just taking care of any sin problem are you kidding me mm -hmm. you know? he just forgives it that's how he did it on the cross he came to mm -hmm. forgive yeah One of the most important words i think he spoke on the cross was father forgive them for they know not what they're doing Absolutely. I love talking about Jesus. <laughs> he has brought such hope and, and life to me and just restoration. He saved me from the damage religion caused, you know? Oh, but yeah. I think, I think I don't even judge them. Like now, I'm like, they're doing the best that they knew how. And even Aaron Obke helped me to see that. Mm, like when mm -hmm. he talked about fundamentalists, well, they have their place. It's equally as valid as mysticism. Yeah, it's just a it's stage in people's journey. It's necessary for some people. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just finding the peace in it all. You know, like, oh, wow, I guess it is all working out. This is a perfect plan. Hmm. <laughs> you know, so. All for a purpose.
for anybody else who's watching, come and join the Christian Mystic page just to get some some encouragement in your Facebook, you know, feed once in a while. And and I uh, just want to bless all our listeners and say shalom and namaste. The Christ in me bows to the Christ in you. <laughs> I love that. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you so much for having me on, Daniel. It's, I've really enjoyed this. <laughs>